A lot has been happening. I've got so many exciting projects in the works, but I want to tell you about my first exciting project. Yay! While I was out on a date, I was lamenting about the fact that there are terrible options for accessible vehicles. You can have a minivan, a minivan, or a minivan. And if you don't want a minivan, guess what? You can have a minivan or you can walk or the bus. Well, I don't know that the sexy wheelchair lady is like minivan material, but I have a minivan. I'm also a giant tree hugger, proud giant tree hugger. So I want an all electric vehicle. Well, you can't have all electric and accessible. Unfortunately, where they tend to put the batteries is in the bottom of the car, which is exactly where the ramps and everything else needs to go for the adaptive equipment. So I was lamenting about this at my date. And he says, hold on, I know a guy. I know a guy who does these projects. So next thing you know, we're connected, we're talking. I tell him about my idea. I want an all electric, accessible, sexy vehicle. He got so excited. And so as we were texting, he said, do you mind if we make this an episode? I'm shooting a show. Sure, I don't care. I just want to get what I want. All electric, accessible, sexy. And the next day, the producer calls me. We arrange that I'm going to come out that day. We shoot our first episode. Yay! We capture like the planning process, talking about what I want it to have, what it has to have. They then tour my car look at the equipment that's already in there because I have an easy lock system and we capture like what the easy lock does, how it works, the where it's mounted, the release buttons, the emergency release lever, all those technical things. They see that the car, you know, hydraulically tilts, the ramp comes out, the door opens, all this stuff happens when I just click click my remote and the car just starts transformer right before your eyes. So they capture all that. And during that, I wonder if I'm allowed to give you a sneak peek. Hmm. During that, he mentions, how do you feel? Oh, back up. I said, the biggest problem is having enough clearance for the height of my chair because my chair is so tall. I'm sitting on batteries and all this technology. So the car, the, the wheelchair is pretty tall. The car needs to be pretty tall. What can we get? I mean, I like luxury, so sure, it would be great. If, you know, I could get a, like maybe a Range Rover, but I don't know if it's tall enough inside. I said maybe like a BMW X5, but I don't know if it's tall enough inside. I know that the Tesla Model X is not tall enough inside. That's where I started. So we just were kind of racking our brains, like what kinds of vehicles are, have enough headroom. He said, did you ever think of a vintage car? And I thought, Never. I've never once thought about having a vintage car. I love to go to car shows. I go to Concourse d'Elegance, auto shows, classic car museums. I love to look at old cars. I like to drive super modern cars. So no, I've never once thought of owning street art in my garage. I just like to go look at it and then come home. So when he asked me that, I, I just got instantly like dropped in the ocean of endless possibilities. Where do I even start? Um, what year should I be looking? I said, you know, I was originally looking at the Volkswagen ID Buzz, I think they're calling it because it's throwback inspired, but all electric. I just, they're not making it here. They started production in June of 22, last month, in Europe, but they're not even going to start production here until a year later, which means I can't possibly even know what the internal measurements are until a year and a half from now. Yeah, that's out. But what about an original, like an OG Volkswagen bus? Hmm, maybe? He happened to have a 71 bus in his shop that he was currently converting because his business is converting regular cars to electric all the time. The only thing that would be new for him would be the accessible part. I kind of looked at what he had. It was a Volkswagen pickup truck. Not my thing at all. We just toyed with some ideas. I said, do you have some suggestions? Even Where do I look? Where do I shop? Where do I buy? 
a car. He said, we don't even need it to run. We just need the shell because we're going to put, in essence, a Tesla underneath. Oh, so we just want a car that looks vintage and has like some vintage feels, but it's all modernized and electric. I later learned that that's called a resto mod or an electro restro, no, <laughs> electro resto mod because you sort of restore and modernize and electrify. Electro resto mod is where I'm leaning depending on what resto means because now I have to go look for a car. What I started thinking is do any of these older cars have any sentimental meaning to me? Is there anything that speaks to me? Uh, the only thing that popped in my head was Heart to Heart the TV show because I loved that show but that was like a, a 280, 350 SL convertible, way tiny, that'll never work. Uh, they did have that Rolls Royce that um, Max drove and that they, it was either a silver one or a black one. They had two different ones in the show. And I thought maybe, maybe something like that. I, it's probably old enough and big enough. The guy, his name's Gadget. He said, start looking in like the 40s, the 50s, 40s, 30s. The further you go back, the more spacious the cars were inside. So I came home and I started to do just generic research. Gadget had said, I just look on Craigslist or various auction places, just go see what's out there. So I go on Craigslist and I find a gorgeous car. And then I started doing some research about that car and it got so exciting. This is an example of what it would look like refinished. This is not what it looked like when it was being sold. But I found a 46 Cadillac Fleetwood limousine and it's gorgeous. The benefit to it is that it's a limousine so the center of the car already doesn't have anything in it. It's open and then the bench is in the back just like it is in my minivan and then the driver is in the front just like it is in my minivan. There's a lot that needs to be done because it's a limousine you'd have to take the whole center wall out with the piece of glass in it and then take out a bench seat because we have another idea of how to have a interchangeable front seat. We'll get into the details later, but we'll take out the bench seat, have a roaming front seat and an empty space for whichever side I'm either the driver or the passenger. So a lot comes out. Basically it's the shell of the car, the dashboard, the doors, the, the handles, the back seat, and then an extremely flat floor because we're making it electric, we don't need to leave any bumps for anything. And then I can turn around inside. So I got excited. I got really, because it's a gorgeous car. But what color scheme do I want? Because red's my favorite color. I think a car in a, a mono, mono body color is boring. I've always really been drawn to two-tone cars, two-tone interiors, anything with some contrast and some flavor. So I started to go through and imagine, looked up some pictures of two-tone cars. Obviously the one I found is two-tone. And I thought, oh, I don't want a black car because that looks like a funeral or a dignitary. I don't want anything stuffy. I picked the red bottom and a champagne -y color top. I thought white, but like a pearly white. And then I thought, well, maybe not white because it shows dirt. So maybe like a, a creamy champagne color because if it's dirty, it's not as obvious. I mean, I strive to wash my car, but come on. I have found this and I got all excited about it. Well, I send him some ideas. I show him what I'm finding. We get on the phone and we talk for four hours. The whole project takes a left turn because I told him I looked at some Volkswagen buses, but the problem is that the way a Volkswagen is designed from the manufacturer is that they build a cage around the wheel well and they put the seats right on top of the wheels. Well, obviously my wheelchair cannot go where there is already a wheel. So I had eliminated that long before I even found the 46 Cadillac. He says, but wait, what if we put you between the wheels and we make it a center drive? Hmm. I didn't even know you could drive a car from the center. He also said that um, the Tesla pickup truck is a center drive and that they're safer because you have like these larger crumple zones on each side of you. 
you can see around the car better because you have a better view from both sides instead of right next to you and nothing over there. It got more interesting, like, well, wait a minute. He also mentioned that that 46 limousine, because think about it, I said limousine, is going to be about 20 feet long. It had a 133-inch wheelbase and then the front and the back of the car. I don't want to drive a literal land yacht. I don't want to drive a 20-foot car. Parking spaces, on average, are only 19 feet long. Well, geez, that doesn't work. I had such great ideas, too. I was going to take the um, running boards and tilt them to make them be part of the ramp. There were so many cool ideas in there. And then I told him about another company, a fellow person in my community who's Stacy Zorn. She had a company or has a company, I'm not sure, where she was working toward these little Ken gurus. It's a cute concept. It's a one person runabout town wheelchair vehicle. The problems with that is it's not, it's only one person. And it has a top speed of 25 miles an hour or something. It's kind of like a golf cart. It's not an actual vehicle. And so it's literally only for going to the grocery store, assuming you don't live on a busy street. So I said, if there's a way for us to make this, and I sent him a link, into a street, actual street car, where I can get on the freeway, something small, a little grocery getter that I can tool around in, because anytime the car is bigger than it needs to be, it costs you something to move that vehicle, either gasoline or electric. I said to him, maybe if we could do it in like, a smart car or a mini or some small car base, but then adapt it to be a wheelchair and a person. And next thing you know, he sends me the picture, this cute picture. Isn't this adorable? This little 1956 Fiat 600. And I said, that is gorgeous. It's teeny, but gorgeous. I don't know. I, my chair will never fit in there. So we then stumble onto a topic which will be a different project of actually working on perhaps a concept for a better wheelchair. But he said, or you can do alterations where you chop the top and raise it and, and make it more adapted. And I thought, okay, well that might look weird. I imagine this cute tiny little car and if you then double the height, it's going to look wonky. It's going to look goofy. What, what's this tiny little car and this big giant bubble on top of it? I don't know. That seems odd. So then I start doing more research. And next thing you know, I'm just coming up with photo after photo after photo of the most bizarre looking vehicles. And I think they're all adorable. I just want something unique, preferably sexy. but. Sexy is in the eye of the beholder, as I've always said to you, what's attractive to you may not be attractive to the next person. So what's sexy to me is confidence and uniqueness. And well, some of these cars, you have to be pretty confident to drive because they are not typically sexy. They're unique. They're eye-catching. They're a bunch of things that very much reflect my personality. They're bold. They are a statement. They're quirky. When I started looking at them, I discovered so many different cars in the past. And so I found the greatest things. The first one was this Corvair Green Brer. I thought it's kind of like a Volkswagen bus, but it's got a lot more of that classic automotive American 50s car in it. I mean, I'm from Detroit originally, so I'm, I'm Motown. I'm the Motor City. I'm all that stuff. So it's got that feel of an American classic car. I'm American. Why would I buy a Volkswagen if I didn't have to? The seats are still over the wheel, so you still have to make it a center drive. The options are still the same, but a little more American, if that matters. Then I found this 1970s gem. It's called a Brubaker Box. 
which apparently other people have found also, and they are now doing a crowdsourcing fundraising thing to restart up this Brubaker box kit. Originally, it was a kit car. It came in a box with 11 pieces, and you built it yourself. This modern version is exactly what I would drive. It's modern. It looks futuristic. I swear to God, the side of this vehicle looks like the door would be a gullwing door. It's like the side of the spaceship from Close Encounters. And when that door opens, you imagine a bunch of smoke to come out and boop, 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 boop. I'm like, yes, I want a spaceship car. That one I can't have yet, but wouldn't that be cool? The next one I came upon was a classic Fiat. So we go back to him showing me that little Fiat and I thought, well, I wonder if Fiat ever made a truck. Let's go see what Fiat's got because he sent me a Fiat car, but if the project we start with is more similar to where we're going, then there's the less work and the less cost and the less time for adapting it. Well, I came across this little gem the Fiat 600 Multipla. It has a strong flavor of Volkswagen, especially with this two-tone paint job. We still have the same issue that the seats are over the top of the wheel, so it's gonna have to be a center drive again. Could that door be a gullwing door and open up so that I can enter and exit? It's on the table. I haven't dismissed it. They're not super easy to find. I've never seen one before in, with my own eyeballs in person. I don't know if I'd have to import it, but I do know it's out there somewhere as an idea. I'm saving my favorite one for last. Then I found a Citroen H, but I found the Citroen HG, which is a concept car or a, a soon coming to production car that Citroen did themselves. They looked at their old H, which is a giant truck commercial. And apparently way back in the day, they did a concept car called the G, which was a very shrunken down version of their H, but they never brought it to production. It was just in concept. So then somebody digs out the paperwork and decides to call this the HG, which in my guesstimation is, it's not as big as an H and it's not as small as a G, but it looks the same. And now that's what we would call a modern SUV slash minivan. That's the size and proportion. But what I loved about this, though it's not sexy, it's boxy, it's like a minivan. I don't know how sexy that is, but what it is, is it reminds me of that, um, that movie by Spielberg. Duel. Yes, Duel. Finally. So when I saw this, it, it's intimidating. It's bold. It's, it's, you know, it's behind you. It's scary. I'm not scary, but people often tell me I'm intimidating because I'm bold, because I'm right there, right in your face sometimes. A little, a little too much sometimes. It instantly made me think of that Steven Spielberg movie, Duel, where the semi was right on his tail, intimidating him, and I thought, ooh, the nose of that is scary. That behind you makes you say, I better get out of the way. Don't, don't putz around in front of me, which is definitely my personality. Like drive, move, get out of my way. I don't care, just don't slow me down. And then I found the last one, which is kind of becoming my favorite in a way. This little, I think it's from the 80s. This 80s. Nissan S Cargo and literally S Cargo because it looks like a snail. I thought this is exactly what I envisioned when I said, can we take the Ken Guru, but make it a little beefier and actually meant for the streets, actually meant for freeway speeds. This one is just on the cusp. I think it has like a 60 mile an hour cap with its current engine, the way that it was manufactured. Uh, it was only manufactured in Japan. It's got that goofy bubble look that I thought would look bad on the Fiat. When he said, oh, we can just raise the roof. And I thought, won't that look weird? Well, this is what I imagine it would look like. And, it, and yes, it's different. 
And yes, when you see it, you're like, what was that? I don't dislike it though. There's some downsides to this. I don't like the mini window inside of a window because clearly you can't get that giant window down inside the car. So they had to make some compromises as to how do you do a window that fits inside the door. So they did some goofy things on this. It's right-hand drive, so that's gonna be weird and problematic, especially if I try to go to a drive-through or anything. Like how can I get any food in this country? And clearly with my wheelchair, I'm not going to get in and out every time I want to go to a restaurant. It's so much more convenient for me to do a drive through So yeah, a, a right-hand drive car, not so good here. Could we change it? Possibly. I haven't looked into this with Gadget yet, but this also had a, a speed limiter in Japan, apparently. You, there must have been at some point uh, speed issues where there was a, an alarm in it that kept going off after you got past, I don't know, 45 or something. As you approached 60, it had a chime that just kept chiming. Like if you had left your door open and it was chiming, you don't want to hear that the whole time you're driving. I thought, oh no, 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 I don't want that either. So instead of going with this exact car, because I have found them, only 8,000 of them were made. I have found them and I can have it imported and it's gonna cost, including import fees to be delivered to Long Beach. I think it's $10,300. And then convert it to electric and then have it accessible. And then, so the price is still gonna be jacked up. And I don't know if I need to do that, but I will discuss it with Gadget. Instead, here's what I'm thinking. Are you with me still? Hopefully I haven't lost you on my crazy, designing a custom car adventure. I think I want to find a Fiat 600 so I can get that vintagey feel, the cute nose and the, and the front of the car, and then chop the top off. And instead of making it arched like the S Cargo, maybe do it squared off because I also want to have a sunroof and the curved glass of the escargot is very problematic. Whereas if we make a flat roof, we can get a convertible, uh, not a convertible, that would be nice too, if that's even a possibility. We'll, I'll throw it on the table and see what he says. But if I can't get a convertible, I'll get a sunroof. So then we can just put a sunroof in the top of my vehicle from an existing sunroof. So we have a bunch of ideas where it's a little bit of a Fiat and a little bit of an S Cargo and see what we do from there. This project is gonna continue, hopefully. I'm, I'm assuming we're gonna complete this. Cross your fingers. Hope we're going to get this project off the ground because I'm super excited about all of the cool ideas that have been thrown around so far. Wait and see where this project goes. Talk to you later, bye.